all the way from the airplane, all the way till when you start your tawaf, you have to read talbiyah. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik, labbaik ala sharika labbaik. Oh Allah, I am performing tawaf for Umrah or Hajj or whichever tawaf. Oh, oh Allah, I am performing tawaf for you. Oh Allah, make it easy and accept it for me. So step in line with the black stone with the body facing it. Now two actions need to be done. Now there is a difference of opinion in this. Some people say there is no istiqbal and takbir. Some people say there is istiqbal first and then istilam. Istiqbal and takbir is because tawaf, Prophet said, tawaf is like salah. Tawaf is like salah. At tawafu ka salah. And in another hadith, the Prophet uh, uh, Ibrahim al Nakhi rahmatullah he mentions that in seven places, your hands are raised. And one of them is when you see the Kaaba. So because of this, the Hanafi school of thought is that when you reach the Kaaba for the first time, you will stand in front of the Hajj al-Aswad and you will say, Bismillah Allahu Akbar, as if you are performing Salah. Bismillah Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd, and you put your hands down. And then you do Istilam. Istilam is to kiss the Hajj al-Aswad. So according to the Hanafi school of thought, there is Istiqbal, istiqbal, welcoming the uh, or you you are um, welcoming the Kaaba or you are you are coming in front of the Kaaba and you are starting tawaf like you start a salah. Bismillah, Allah Akbar, and you put your hands down, and then you kiss the Hajj Aswad. Now kissing the Hajj Aswad. So this is the istiqbal which I mentioned. Is to raise one hands like one does in salah while facing the black stone. You can say Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah in the Hadith. Of Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that if there's too many people then don't don't go towards the Hajj al-Aswad uh, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala he said if there's too many people around the Hajj al-Aswad then don't go there because you're a big man you might barge somebody and they might get knocked over you know Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala so he said you, you just from a distance you kiss the Hajj al-Aswad and you fahallil wa kabbir or wakabir wahallin means say Allahu Akbar and la ilaha illallah. So in the hadith of Hazrat Umar, it's mentioned Allahu Akbar la ilaha illallah. In another hadith, it says Allahu Akbar walillahi alhamd. So there are different sayings. You you are free to say whatever you want according to what hadith, whatever you have in your book. It's not it's not faraz, it's not wajib, it's sunnah and mustahab to say these things. So whatever is written in your book, you are free to say that. Okay? Once you've done the, after raising the hands and saying the above, one will put the hands back down to one side. This will always be done when one commences any tawaf. So this is because like salah is takbir, similarly whenever you start tawaf, you will do this. Then, you will do the istilam. So you're facing Hajar al-Aswad there, and you, you are in line with it, and you will do the istiqbal and takbir first. Then you will do istilam. What is istilam? Istilam is to make some form of contact directly or indirectly with the Hajj al-Aswad. So, the best form of Istilam is that there is nobody there except you. Wishful thinking. Nobody there except you and you come and you start your tawaf and you are able to put your lips to the Hajj al-Aswad and put your hands down like this. In some ahadith it is mentioned and you do sajda to the Hajj al-Aswad. Now it doesn't mean you do sajda, it's the action is like sajda because you're putting your face onto and you are kissing the hajr aswad So you're not making sajda but the action is like hajr aswad and you are kissing with your lips the hajr aswad This is the best. The second best is you put your hand and you kiss your hands. That's the second best. The third best is that you put a stick and then you kiss the stick. Prophet when he was on the camel and he was performing the tawaf, he put his stick and then he kissed the stick. And the last one which we normally do, which we will have to do because of the crowd there, is that from a distance you say Allahu Akbar and you kiss your hands. Or you say Bismillah Allahu Akbar and you kiss your hands. Different sayings. Some people say you say Allahu Akbar, some people say Allahu Akbar walillahi alhamd, some people say Bismillah Allahu Akbar. Whatever is written in your book, from a distance you point it towards the Hajj al-Aswad and you kiss your hands and this is the istilam. Every round you will do istilam. The first round, you do takbir, Allahu Akbar, put your hands down, and you do istilam. Every other round, you will do istilam. So every time you will come round, you will say, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, and you carry on. Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, or Allahu Akbar, and you carry on. Every time you reach Hajj al-Aswad, 
you point, you kiss your hands, and you carry on. So every round you will do istilam. When you finish at the end, you will do one more. So that will be number eight istilam. Kiss number eight when you finish. Okay. According to some scholars, there is no kissing at the end. But according to majority of scholars, you will make one more kiss at the end, which will be the eighth istilam. Okay. So it is sufficient to be in line with the black stone facing it from a distance with the palms of both hands raised towards the black stone saying Bismillah Allahu Akbar. After pointing to the black stone with one's palm, one should kiss his hands and put them down. Istilam will be performed a total of eight times at the beginning of every round in Tawaf and after completing the seventh round. Understood? Once you've done your Istilam, then what will you do? There is the Hajj al-Aswad, then you will not face towards the Kaaba again except during Istilam. You will only face with your left shoulder. You do not look at the Kaaba, you do not face towards the Kaaba, you do not move your chest. According to some ulama, it's haram to move your chest towards the Kaaba whilst you're doing tawaf. Now if you're barged into a way that you can't, then you don't. Yeah. Yeah, because if there's a Nigerian, then it'll pop you back. It's finished. Yeah? So what you will do is, you will try your best not to put your chest towards the Kaaba, Put your face towards the Kaaba, you will walk around looking down, conscious that this is the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is huge barakat, huge rahmah which is descending on the Kaaba. This is a place which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen as his house. Therefore, there is lots of barakah and rahmah there. So, what you want is you will be reciting duas. And you will be thinking about all the rahmah there and you will be asking Allah, oh Allah, give me this rahmah. Oh Allah, you have made this place a place of aman and security. Oh Allah, give me that security. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this is a place of security. This is a place of guidance. Oh Allah, give me guidance. Oh Allah, this is a place of rahmah. Oh Allah, give me rahmah. Oh Allah, give me barakah. Everything that you want, you ask. But you will be looking down and making dua all the way around. So you will be going round the Kaaba. The males will be performing Ramad. What is Ramad? In the first three rounds, you will be making Ramad. The Prophet ﷺ, when he came in the seventh year of Hijrah to perform the Umrah, he made Ramad. The Mushrikun were watching the Muslims. So Prophet ﷺ told the Sahaba that they, these people think that you are weak. So I want you to show your strength. So I want you to walk with your chest out and like soldiers walking i want you to walk like this so you will be like a soldier with your arms like this and jogging on the way all the way around one two and three three rounds will be done with raman that is raman if you are with family they will not do raman and if it's difficult for you to do raman with family you do not do raman raman is sunnah it's not wajib or farz you will only do raman if you are able to do so majority times because of the crowd you might not not be able to do raman okay so a female will not do ramal, she will, not, she will walk normally. Ramal will only be performed in the first three rounds. In the last four <coughs> rounds, a male should walk at normal pace. Ramal and ittiba will only take place in that tawaf, which has a sa'i after it. So ittiba, the uncovering of the right shoulder, and ramal is only done in that tawaf where there is a sa'i after it. If you are going to do sa'i after it, then you will do ramal and ittiba. If you are doing a normal tawaf without ihram and with no sa'i after it, there is no raman. You will be doing in normal clothes. Okay? If there is a sa'i after it, you will be doing raman and you will be doing istiba. One must walk around the hatim and not cut through. During tawaf, what should you recite? Any duas. If you want to recite from a book, it's fine. But the duas that you make from the heart will be better. Quran, you can recite Quran, you can do dhikr, you can make dua, read the third kalima, read the fourth kalima. These are all masnoon duas which either the Prophet or the Sahaba or the Tabi'un or the scholars have read. One should not read loud in a manner which disturbs others. It is disliked to eat whilst we are performing tawaf. One may drink zamzam in between if one feels thirsty. Yeah, no more, uh, there are some people who are walking around the uh, Kaaba and the phone rings. 
Asalaamu Alaikum, my Muslim, what are you doing? I'm doing Tawaf. <laughs> All right, okay. What's the cricket score? Somebody has mentioned this somewhere. That they were performing Tawaf, and one of the brothers is asking the cricket score whilst he's performing Tawaf. This is, this is what's happening in, in, in our lives. That we don't understand where we are. So make sure that your phones are switched off or on silent. Don't disturb others. And don't disturb yourself. It should be a total connection between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Total connection. Whilst performing tawaf, if one wuzu, wuzu breaks or a first salah starts, one needs to take a break, then it is permissible to pause the tawaf and then continue from the very place he stopped. Wuzu will have to be renewed. So if your wuzu breaks, you remember the place where you stopped and you go into wuzu. If you feel that you want to start that round again, that is fine as well. One will not gesture to any other corner of the Kaaba besides the corner with the black stone. So you don't point to any other corner except the black stone. There is a Rukne Yemeni. Rukne Yemeni is the corner before Hajar Aswad. The corner before Hajar Aswad. Now, that corner, if, I, if you are next to it and can be touched, then that is a Sunnah. But if you are far away from it, then you don't gesture towards it. So Hajar Aswad, you're supposed to kiss it and touch it. And if you are far away from it, then you gesture towards it. But Rukne Yamani, you can you are supposed to touch it. But if you can't touch it, then there is no gesture. Okay? So this is the Rukne Yamani. That's how much is exposed. So if you are going past it and you can touch it, then that's fine. But if you can't touch it, then you don't gesture towards it and wave. You you see lots of people waving because they don't learn and they don't know. So you don't copy, oh, they're waving, so I should wave as well. No. You do according to your knowledge. The dua whilst walking between Rukne Yamani and Hajar Aswad, the famous dua, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adab al So in between that corner and Hajar Aswad, this is the masnoon dua which the scholars have written, that Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adab al Whilst you are walking from and the rest of the rounds, you read any dua. Once one reaches Hazrat Aswad, one round is complete. So you face towards Hazrat Aswad, Bismillah, Allah, Akbar, kiss your hands, and you carry on and you count the second round. And then the third round. Make sure you've got a tasbih which is counting the rounds. Sometimes you forget how many rounds you've done. Seven rounds is one tawaf. Seven rounds is one tawaf. After every one tawaf is completed, two rakats salah is wajib. According to Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Rahmatullahi. According to other scholars, it's nafal uh, or sunnah, it should be prayed. But according to Imam Abu Hanifa and Imam Malik, Rahmatullahi, the two rakats are wajib. So you must read two rakats after seven rounds are complete. After every seven rounds, one tawaf is complete. After every tawaf, two rakats are wajib. The tawaf is completed upon making istilam of Hajar Aswad. At the end of the seventh round, this will be the eighth istilam in total. It is wajib to perform two rakats after tawaf. It is sunnah to read Surah Al Kafirun and Kul Wallahu Ahad in these two rakats. Preferably, these two rakats should be performed behind Maqam Ibrahim. Um, just, just to point out here, the two rakats should not be performed in the makru times for salah. So after Asr is Makru time, after the Fajr Salah is done, that is Makru time, and at sunrise and Zawal time, these are Makru times. So because these are Makru times, you shouldn't read these two rakats at this time. You should read them afterwards. Okay? It is preferable to perform these two rakats behind Maqam Ibrahim. But if you can't, and there's no space there, you can read it anywhere in the Haram. And if you can't read them in the Haram and you forgot, you can read them anywhere outside as well. <coughs> 